Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my Range Rover. Now very quickly, if you're one of my 75% of viewers that are not subscribed to the channel, please do go ahead and subscribe now. It's totally free and I need it for my own self gratification. So if you have been following the channel, you'll know that the last time we saw this Range Rover, well, it wasn't in a good way. In fact, it wasn't even with me because it was in a garage in Wales. We chose to take this car on holiday to Wales, it was almost a month back now, uh, to enjoy it and to do some off-roading and have lots of fun doing basically the first road trip in it. But it all went wrong when the brake lights went snap. So we just managed to go and pick this car up because we've been all over the place in the past few weeks. So it's been about three weeks since I've had the car and we finally got it back and what a glorious day for it. So I'm pleased to report that the car is working now. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing is a bit of a steering wheel wobble at around motorway speed, which still hasn't been resolved. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm hoping it's just a wheel balancing issue. But in the end, it was more than just the brake lines that needed replacing. And the bill on this cost me 1,400 pounds. A rather expensive holiday and uh, more than I was hoping to spend on that week. But there we go. And of course, that's not to mention the fact that we had to buy the Mercedes, drive that back to London, and then drive all the way back to London in the 7 Series, or should I say Wales, and then back with both. So I don't even want to think about how much it costs, basically, this breaking down on me, but it's a lot of money. So fingers crossed we can do some off-roading in the Range Rover at a later date because we wanted to do that in Wales. So today we'll take it for a little drive. I'll explain exactly what repairs have been done and also have a little bit of an honest chat about whether, whether it's time to throw in the towel with this car because it now well, it now owes me more than it's worth considerably. And I've got to the point where I'm starting to get a little bit well, very pissed off with it, actually. It's just not being great. So let's go for a drive and we'll talk a little bit more. But for now, at least in the sunshine, enjoy the Range Rover for the 10 minutes or so in the year that it's working. I have missed the sound of this BMW V8. Well, here we are back in the Range Rover and everyone say hello to Katie, my beautiful girlfriend, who is joining me for this video because, well, you were there when everything went wrong in Wales and I thought it'd be really interesting to get your perspective on everything that sort of went wrong. Well, I have to say you were just a very good passenger because I was very stressed. You were quite stressed. Because we literally were driving when the brakes failed and we yeah. were on that really steep bit do you remember going yeah, into that and town was, like completely windy so that's terrifying yeah when you don't have brakes no it was it was not fun i remember you were like pushing on the brakes and saying there's no there's nothing like pushing back on the brakes and i was like oh that's, that's great, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. terrifying. yeah you were so calm if I'd had anyone next to me that was flapping, I think I would have completely lost it and just driven the car into a hedge. So thank you for keeping me <laughs> okay, calm. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't do that. Yeah, I know. If yeah. you'd started flapping, it would have been game over. Do you hate this car now? No. Do you, do you like this car? I love this car. Why do you love Even it? Even though it tried to strand us in Wales. Well, it, no, it did. It did. <laughs> yeah. We had to it buy did. another car. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I love this car. I can't explain it though, because there's so much wrong with it. And it's really funny that you, because you've driven it. Yeah. And you love driving it. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because that's what I tell everyone else on the videos. What? Is that there's something about these mm. that it's hard to quantify into words. But yeah. like I, I have every logical reason to absolutely hate this car. And to be honest, as we're driving right now, I've just heard a couple of new rattles and I'm starting to get really annoyed again. <laughs> And so I, I despise this thing, but there is just something about it that is so lovely. And I guess lots of you guys watching are probably Range Rover owners and stuff, and you, I see you in the comments agreeing because it seems to be a thing. But there will come a point, I think, where head over heart, because like I say, I'm now not positive in this car. Um, it's cost me more to buy and to run and to, to maintain than I could even sell it for. So. Um, not fantastic and not what I was hoping for when I bought this thing in the first place. But yes, there is just something about it. And having said that, I've got a Audi SQ8, 100,000 pound press car sitting on the driver this week. Yet, yeah, most of the time I still choose to drive this, which makes no sense. 
but you know the feeling, don't mm-hmm. you? It's just, it's just there's something about it. Yeah, I always want to go out on this one instead of the other one. Do you? Mm-hmm. Let's let this lady go. That's and nice. We'll probably get a red light, won't we? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. When I'm driving this, I do just feel nice. Do you feel nice? I feel nice because it's just such a relaxing thing to drive. You don't want to drive fast. All of my other cars, with, with a few exceptions maybe, like you just you sort of want to drive fast. Mm. Like it's fun. Whereas this, it's not. It's just fun to cruise. Yeah, but I don't feel like this makes you calm when things go wrong. No, it makes me very angry, <laughs> yes. Exactly. But I kept it together, so it's okay. But I am actually about to punch something because of that rattle that's now coming from the back. And I don't know what it is. Kill me. <laughs> so yes, I said I'll tell you how much I spent preparing this. It was about 1,400 quid. What needed doing was the brake lines on both sides at the rear. The one on the rear right had completely split, which is what meant that we had brake failure. And the one on the rear left was, well, 90% of the way there. So they both needed replacing along with some brake pins, a uh, few other bits. I should have brought the invoice with me. Maybe I'll put a shot over on this video so you can have a look. And they said that both of the front calipers were basically seized. So they got replaced as well. I also had a new battery fitted, which seems to have done wonders to just sort of all of the electronics and stuff because I've not had any sort of transmission fail safe warnings or any little niggles like that that you would get with this sort of battery that's not operating perfectly. So battery was about 200 quid, the calipers were maybe 200 quid a corner and I had two and then the brakes and the brake lines maybe another few hundred pounds and about 400 pounds of labor so with VAT it added up to around 1400 quid so like I say I well it, it's wiped me out this car basically because of all these unexpected bills and I hate it and I really should be thinking about selling it but I, I, I don't want to because maybe it's the optimism in me that thinks it's all gonna be fine even though now I've just noticed more issues uh, I, I don't I don't know but I, I just love this car and I'm happy to have it back and excited to use it a little bit more I think so yeah needless to say despite all of the ongoing issues with this car and the fact that it is literally bankrupting me it just has to be my favorite in the very small collection that I seem to be accruing it's just great and I love it I love the color I love the way it looks I love the air suspension I just love the way it drives how minimalistic but yet not so dated the interior looks and having seen the release photos of the brand new Range Rover it just makes me love this even more I think it's such a timeless design and the fact that you like it makes me like it even more how do you because you're bankrupting me because I won't sell it because you like it <laughs> really is <laughs> no. that why no there's a little bit of a reason well, I, don't want I like that you bankrupt. like it rather you weren't <laughs> <laughs> the engine is just mint on this thing mm. it's like so smooth the gearbox is great mm. like everything actually yeah it's very drivable isn't it yeah it's lovely to drive it's just you hear the knocks and you get the wheel vibration it just ruins the whole thing yeah the wheel vibration it just ruins it yeah but i still love it <laughs> it's the worst it's literally yeah. this car's like a disease isn't it no it's like a drug <laughs> yeah it's like smoking Mm-hmm. It's so bad for you, and you know it is, mm-hmm. but you can't stop. Look at that dog in the window. I saw that dog in the window. That is adorable. It's so cute, isn't it? So I want to hear from you guys in the comments because there is a few things I could do. Obviously, I could sell this car. Since I bought that Mercedes, lots of you had said, keep the Mercedes and sell this. I just, I don't think I can bring myself to sell this. I, 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 I think what I've said to to you and to other people is that I think I'm one big bill away from selling it if something else in the next few months comes up that's a matter of thousands to repair and I bet you're all saying in the comments it will and it might do then I think at that point I'm just logically gonna have to get rid of it because there's things I want to do in my life and I think if I stick with this um, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with my life other than sit in a garage and wait for this to come down off the ramp so Realistically, I'm not going to sell it, but I think it will come to that point where I have to potentially. But in the meantime, would it be would it be a better idea for me to, to stick with it and pay for the odd repair when it comes up, or should I get rid of it, 
save some money and spend 10 grand on a much newer L322, maybe with the TD V8. Actually, no, I, I want to stay with petrol. But would that be favorable? I don't really know. I know lots of you know a lot more about Range Rovers than I do. So I welcome any and all of your suggestions and comments on the topic. So everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you haven't minded this sort of 20 minute waffle, but I thought it deserved an update on the Range Rover. I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to introduce Katie to you guys because, let's just say you're gonna be seeing her soon on the channel again when we do an interesting challenge. That's gonna be so much fun. And I'm gonna win. No, you're not. We'll see. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it'd be nice to just do an update on the car. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, I apologize for the rough and readiness uh, nature of this video. I would like to film some actual content with the Range Rover, put it off road, do some crazy stuff with it, do some crazy road trips, uh, when and if ever it's all fixed up. I mean, that's really been the problem, is I haven't been able to do any proper content with it because it's been sat in a workshop on a ramp. So fingers crossed, times will change and things will uh, get better for this Range Rover and I can keep it and enjoy it. But until then, I uh, wish you a lovely week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all and we'll see you all very, very soon.